Do you have a heating, ventilation, or air conditioning problem and need it fixed as soon as possible? Has it been a long time since the last time you have the HVAC system in your home or at your office maintained? Finding the right HVAC contractors can sometimes be hard. You need to make sure that they have the knowledge, skill, and experience to provide you with complete repair and maintenance services. That's why we're here to help. With a highly trained, licensed, insured, and experienced team of technicians, we're proud to offer the best services in the field. From sale, installation, to repair and maintenance, we take each project with care and with a focus on open communication and getting the job done right the first time. Maintaining the ventilation, air, and heating systems in your home or office is the key to the longevity of your units and effective energy savings. So don't risk your money on an ineffective HVAC system. Call us today. Good morning, this is DCR Troy Community Radio.com. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN for David Denoyer on TCTV. It's time now for the Lincoln Community Center report, and with us this morning is Mr. Shane Carter. Good morning. Good morning, Clint. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, man. New year, got some uh, new surprises and stuff going on in my life, so I'm just happy to be here and uh, happy to, to move forward with no snow on the ground today. And, yeah, no know, kidding. Yes, sir. So. Uh, well, we hope the uh, storm stays south. I pray it does stay south. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, it's uh, Black History Month, and you've got a couple events. Yes, we're um, we're this year. It's kind of new. We're working with the Miami County Library and Rochelle and her staff, and um, we're going to host two events in collaboration together. The first one is February sixth, um, from five p.m. to seven p.m., and that's our. Uh, Soul Food Tasting and Jazz event, which we had last year, and uh, I think I talked to you about it last year, Clint. Yeah, you had a great turnout for that. It was good, man. We had a lot of people. Um, the band that comes down, their, their name is Raw Expressions. Um, some guys from the Dayton area, Cincinnati, Hamilton area, and they really do a nice job. And uh, the Troy Foundation funded a grant to us in the library to host that community event. And then we're also doing one together on uh, February the 27th. That's a Saturday morning. Started at 10 a.m. and that event, the kids are doing a youth reenactment of some self-evident truths, which was the book that Lucille Wheat and Lois Davies wrote. Um, it depicts, uh, well, growing up in Troy in the 1940s, really 46 into the 60s, it talks about the racial tension, uh, overcoming some racial segregation, uh, the way they integrated the schools and the parent-teacher organization. So it's really a neat book. The kids have picked a couple excerpts that they really like. One of them talks about the kids being able to learn how to swim at the at the Lincoln Center. And it talks about um, some of the things they did to be able to offer swim lessons to multiracial groups. And uh, really neat in that Mrs. Wheat, her son, drowned in the Miami County River. So she found the need through her son drowning. And Lois Davies, uh, as a swim instructor and living on the river, she really, really wanted to make this initiative possible. So I'm going to encourage everybody to come out on the 27th at the library. The kids have been working on their lines, trying to get them to memorize them. Um, but they probably use some index cards. But... It's really going to be a neat day. Then we'll leave there and go down here um, to the First Presbyterian Church with uh, Richard, Richard, Reverend Richard Culp. And we're going to go down the Underground Railroad and take a tour of that. And they're going to talk about the history of that. So Wow, that'll be great for the kids. It will be good. Hopefully they'll it's, learn something. And it's, well, I'm, it, it's history, and it's right here in our hometown. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, another thing you have coming up is the Lover's Ball with the band Defunk and the All-Stars. Yeah, um, so we're, we're, we're partnering again with Brad Denson and uh, Square Roots Records. Brad has been a volunteer, a supporter, an organizer at the center for since I started. I remember the first probably two months I started, he brought, me a lot of, brought us a lot of soap and cleaning supplies. He's always had a sense of community, and I thank him for that, even prior to opening up his, his, his record studio over here. But what he told me was, Shane, let's find a way to partner and provide a, a music event for the for the, the benefit of the center, but also to allow people to come in and, and have a good time. So it's scheduled for February the 13th. Um, there's Square Roots Record at 105 South Market Street. Um, the doors open at seven o'clock, and the tickets are pre-sale for $35, and they're $40 at the door. Um, I just want to encourage people to come out. All pre proceeds going to support the Link Community Center and our youth programming. And uh, you can check it out on social media. I know we thank Clinton Troy Community Radio. You guys have been running it and, and promoting it for us. And, we're hoping that's a good event. All right. Uh, another 
event, a uh, banquet of sorts, yeah. your basketball banquet. Yeah, so the Winter Basketball League is coming to an end. Um, we've got two weeks of basketball left. We've scheduled our banquet for Sunday, February the 21st, and it's at 4 p.m. at uh, First Place Fellowship Center over here on Cherry Street. Um, all of our kids and parents and grandparents come out. Um, the kids receive their awards. Our goal this year was to try and get every one of our sponsors there. So we're sending out letters, any sponsors that are listening. Um, we want to make sure that you guys are able to come out and if you can and, and fellowship with us, see your kids get their trophies and ultimately get a picture with the kids and their trophies. That's something I want to put in a plaque and be able to put like in the office here at Troy Community Radio or you know at the sub house, the places that have supported. And for the kids it's really cool because then they understand all the talks they've had of, okay, well Harlow Builders, we're 4-0 and we beat Troy Community Radio. They can put a face with the organization and to them, you know, it's kind of like their, if you will, their end of the year party or, you know, that type of deal. So it's pretty neat. Um, once again, want to invite all of our sponsors out. We'll be sending letters out to everybody. Yeah, it's great to hear that when you said that it's the end of winter basketball. Yes. And But what that means to me is spring is coming. So that means it's time for a spring basketball sign-up. Yes, and uh, we've had a lot of calls this week about that. Um, we're going to begin sign-ups the week of February the 8th, but we will not start practices until Saturday, March 5th. Um, parents, if you could, go on the website, uh, check out the Facebook. We've got the uh, the flyer up for that, and we'll begin uh, with registrations uh, the first week of February. It's for all kids K-12. to um, Our goal would be that we can have a strong spring league uh, to allow for any kids that didn't get to participate on their school team, maybe they didn't make the team, maybe there was a situation with transportation, um, that they can still participate and have fun. So if you have any questions about the spring league, contact us at 937-335-2715. And now that we're talking about spring, yes. we'll go ahead and talk about your Easter egg hunt. Yes. That's, that's going to be here in no time. It is. So the annual Easter egg hunt um, is scheduled for Saturday, March the 26th. Um, I'll remind everybody Easter is falling early again this year, well, at least in my book it is. Um, and we're starting at 12 noon. One really, really important thing. The last two years I've probably neglected my responsibility on the flyer and on our information. We've kind of had split time for the younger kids go at noon and the older kids are supposed to go at 12.15. Um, what's happened is a lot of people are showing up at 12.15 or showing up late, um, and then like the Easter egg hunt's are already done. So what we're going to do is encourage everybody, all ages, we're going to start at noon, but we're going to separate our older kids from our younger kids to allow for everybody to go at the same time. That way when it's done, it's done, and at least on my heart, I'll feel like I've tried my best to accommodate all people in their schedules and things. But to get everybody there at the same time at yes. noon, if you're going to participate, please be there at noon. Be there at noon. Five minutes early be good, too. Bring a basket or a bag for the kids to put their eggs in. Um, we'll explain the instructions, but usually we go a limit of 10 eggs and one prize egg to allow everybody to get some. And also, if you're busy on that day, there's a lot of other good Easter egg hunts around town, like the library has a good one, um, and I'm sure that there's a, there's some, some other ones going on. So we want to encourage people to get out, and uh, we, we look forward to having another good event this year. All right. How are the donations going? How are you looking for, like, after-school snacks and the cleaning supplies? I'll tell you, we could. Uh, it's a good time. It's about halfway in the year. We could definitely have a replenishment of any basic, like, school supplies for the kids, notebooks, pencils, pens, erasers, colored pencils, uh, markers, crayons. This is about the time of the year, Clint, to be honest, where caps don't get put back on markers. Colored pencils are down, small as a snub. Uh, some of the crayons are broken. And, I mean, it's only natural with 40 kids running around, but we could use some of those things as well as disinfectant spray, sanit hand sanitizer, any type of wipes to kill germs. Um, it's that sniffle season. Yeah. Um, and then kind of on a side note, something I want to note, and I know you know uh, Daryl Chavis, Mr. Chavis, he uh, came and met with me in December, and he's, he's retiring. So we want to thank him for his service. He has been at the center for 51 years. Wow. Um, I think he's probably, I'd have to talk to the mayor and the city, but I think he's probably one of the longest tenured employees we've had in one job here in the city, I'd have to think. And uh, he still, even through his retirement, due to age and health conditions and things, wants to come down and volunteer and be involved. And uh, he, he, told, he asked me one small thing I'll share on the air. We sat down and kind of had our meeting. He said, do you mind if I keep my keys? I've had them for 51 years. And I said, Mr. Chavis, you can keep your keys, no problem. <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was kind of emotional for me in that growing up, I remember going there and he was a guy that told me, take your hat off, pull your pants up, quit cussing, uh, don't hang out out front. He taught me the rules that now allow me to be the director. So the passing of the guard or the, or the torch has been that the structure and discipline that Daryl Chavis and even Charles Charette and the people that were our leaders before have passed down. I'm very excited to kind of, you know, pass on that lineage. So, Well, I can tell that he grew up with my dad as yeah. well because my dad would say the same things to me. It's, it's, <laughs> it's that, you know what, it's that old school approach that probably a lot of us could benefit from. And uh, I think that as I look at the kids nowadays, it's uh, some of those things are being missed. And it's things as simple as how you present yourself, 
um, the way you talk to adults, um, being able to... Respect. It's yes. just the bottom line of respect. Respect kind of covers it all. And and it's the fact that uh, all the elders take that active role yes. in all of the children. Yes. And not just not just their own. Yeah. So we want to thank him, and I, I'm going to uh, work with our board to kind of have, uh, if you will, like a, a ceremony to just really bring closure to that. Um, we did give him a 50-year plaque last year because, I mean, it's 50 years of service. Can't thank him enough. But I just want to let all the listeners know uh, we're very thankful for Daryl Chavis' service. And if you see him out, just make sure you say thanks to him. All right. Hey, thank you so much thank for you. being here this morning, Shane. This has been the Lincoln Community Center Report. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN for David Denoyer on TCTV.